Knowledge of consciousness is enlightenment. The science of self-realization is profound and subtle, but not incomprehensible to the one who has faithfully submitted to the teachings of his master. What is that teaching? It proclaims that you are not the body, but pure awareness. The knowledge of being aware of existence is what bestows godliness to all gods. Listening to the advice of the Master, a devoted disciple offers his complete attention to consciousness. Knowledge of the universe is boundless, but the first thing that one experiences is one's consciousness or the knowledge of one's own existence. Adopt and meditate only on this knowledge, as it is the source of all things that have names and forms. All the wishes of a person who adopts this knowledge are fulfilled. What does that mean? It implies that he has no need to dance the tune of his mind. He covets no pleasures and always abides in the teachings of the Guru. Just as you effortlessly adopted the name given to you by your parents. The teachings of the Guru untie the knot called birth. This knot was strengthened by the misidentification with body and its name. To break this vicious circle, you must conduct life as jnana and not as a body. Then the self knows itself and you recognize that truth. There are many religions in the world, but to abide in one's true nature is the real svadharma, or your ultimate personal spiritual path. It is the greatest sin in the world today that everyone behaves as if he or she is the body. Without our awareness, the rays of self-knowledge emanated, spread across, appearing as the world. The one who abides in the teachings of the Guru clearly sees that his or her final salvation happens by one's own light. Remember, that events happen spontaneously and in the functioning of the universe we do not do anything. For instance, consider the phenomenon of a dream. What effort did you make for the world that you created and quietly witnessed in a dream? Things happen automatically without your volition. Wake up to your true nature and you will find that the same is happening during your waking state. Then you discover the dreamlike nature of the waking world. Chit means consciousness, and that is what we are. Consciousness appears as jiva, the individual soul. To know that consciousness is all-pervading is to know Brahman. Knowingness is prior to the world. This is a description of Bara Brahman and its home. When a Niyani Satguru speaks to you, he knows that you are like him. He does not bother about you being ignorant or whether you know your true nature. When you carefully listen to the Guru's instructions, there is a positive effect of the words on the knowledge of yourself, even if you listen from the standpoint of assuming yourself to be your body. Even if the words have not been clearly understood, they still have an effect. When you chew your food, its aroma and taste are enjoyed temporarily. The digestion that follows goes unnoticed, and yet you receive nourishment provided by the food, or sometimes the adverse effects of indigestion. In the same way, jnana, when given by the Satguru and heard by knowingness, transforms an avid listener. When we speak as if we are the body, knowing very well that in reality we are not, it may not be visible, but the inner self that listens is godly and will surely be influenced by these talks. This happens gradually and quietly and without your notice. You must nourish the dormant jnana that is already present deep inside you. Nourishing means being impressed by the words and discovering the inner awareness 
by preserving it from the onslaught of preconceived notions. This is correct listening and true worship. This knowledge is always available in mind. Attentive listening to the words of the Master is an important sadhana, or spiritual practice. Shravana, or attentive listening, dispels evil influences and dark clouds of ignorance. True penance is to preserve the knowledge earned from the Guru and to reflect upon that wisdom. By filtering gravel and dirt from water, you get clear and potable water. Similarly, by filtering the concept of being body and mind and by removing incorrect impressions, the ever-existing knowledge of being the self is exposed to the surface. What is tangible and perceivable by the senses is nature, but that which we call divine, fathomless and absolute is what permeates our consciousness. In daily living, beings with names and forms and other objects are all perishable. Only para Brahman, who is prior to all existence, is imperishable. So long as that alone is, its presence is not felt. We only become aware of it due to its creation. That phenomenon due to which you find yourself here is mutable and ever-changing. But the source into which it finally merges, the Pada Brahman, is changeless and immutable. It is immaculate just as water itself, which even when dirty, still continues to be water. Many things appear in consciousness and eventually disappear. What remains is the invisible one. What remains after death has no form or appearance. When this fact is clearly understood, the positive and negative effects of ego diminish. You belong to my tribe. I exist because you exist. I'm not referring to the physical form. Only then does unobstructed clarity of understanding the reality happen. The daily events happen spontaneously. Do not take them to be your doing. Consciously hold on to all what is heard here. Do not worry if good or bad deeds happen. Just as clouds do not affect the sun, the appearance of the world has no effect on Pada Brahman. Whenever someone dies, they do not completely perish. They are absorbed into the infinite manifestation. The effect of this teaching exalts and purifies your own knowledge of reality without your noticing it. It is that knowledge which does not strike you at all, despite this teaching. This truth never disappears from me even for a moment. Prior to this life of 83 years, I did not know hunger, thirst, or had any use for medicine. Now this disease called the body has arisen and along with it the necessity of all such things. This experience is quite new. This ailment of consciousness suddenly appeared and has necessitated this hospital known as the world. However, this is a temporary phase. I am not and will never be tied down by this. Without trying to know, I am aware of my real nature. This malady that has appeared is now also an offering to Brahman. Other than that, this has no value or any use. Not much was done by me, like hours of meditation. When the true master arrived, what I thought I was suddenly became inconceivable. And enlightened one credits all to Brahman. A true guru is prior to the appearance of the world. In reality, he is unmanifest and the ever-fulfilled one. Ishwara, or the personal God which is conceived by us, serves him. The Guru appears to have a human form. He conducts his life as a normal person. But in reality, this life has nothing to do with him. That 
is his understanding, belief in determination. Guru is one. The inner and the outer Guru are not different. All actions happen due to the knowingness that was born as a child. And enlightened one credits all happenings in life to Brahman. He says that the world which is visible is situated at the aperture of Brahman or Brahmaranda. The I amness in Brahmarandra shines forth as the world and in the world. There is the body with Brahmarandra. This happens repeatedly and infinitely. The one who sees that supreme consciousness is located in Brahmarandra stays unaffected by the world. Guru means Jnana, that which imbibes the confidence of existence to the world. This is called Parabrahman. Recognize that cosmic intelligence. One cannot know the true significance of the Guru because the word Guru transcends all descriptions in our language. The Vedas and the Holy Scriptures are only words after all. When someone listens to them earnestly and imbibes them faithfully, their effects, positive or negative, happen to the listener. The true meaning of the words must be imbibed in one's own Anubhava or the intuitive life experience. However, that what is the Sadguru does not lend itself to such a rational explanation. Our consciousness that causes witnessing and the witnessed eventually disappears. This is known as death. Just as during our waking state, the dream world merges into one's own consciousness, consciousness also merges into our true being. There is no knowledge without the various senses like touch, smell, sight, taste, and sound. These faculties work in three different ways, namely rajas, tamas, and sattva. And the Yani thoroughly knows that the sense of being will eventually vanish. Our consciousness is also transitory. It goes away one day and there is a sunset of ignorance. A body is born, and it grows by consuming grains which in turn grow like grass. But the consciousness of grass has no individual sense of being. A body is labeled with a name, and then the business of life is conducted with this identification. Consciousness is beyond any such bondage. Due to this, the name of Mula Maya or the primordial illusion continues. The golden womb of this primordial ignorance is your sense of being. From this originates the root of all existence. You must cognize this embryo from which your sense of being is born and then recognize that you are none other than Parabrahman. Your sense of being belongs to the entire universe. It is not your personal asset. Your desires and cravings affect you and the world around you causing endless suffering. No one is born independently. The entire world is needed for this game to happen. You must forget being an individual person. What exists is your spear being. I speak of what I do not know. Swarupa is our true nature. Forgetting your Swarupa or true nature is an invitation to delusion. If one's true nature is remembered and contemplated upon, it leads to being established in the self. The conviction of self is to be constantly established in the understanding of your Swarupa. This body is merely a material object and not our true nature. The taste of this mundane object that is made from the sattva of the five elements is our sense of being. Just as we are not the material things, we are not the quality of the material things either. 
Our true nature is independent of our body or our personal consciousness. In fact, the entire manifestation is dependent on our Swarupa. That which has not been touched during the great dissolution of the past is our Swarupa, as it is timeless and eternal and is known as truth. Everything else in this universe is anitya, or impermanent, and hence untrue. The five elements depend upon our Swarupa for their existence. The knower of these elements is our knowingness. But knowingness is not our true nature as it rises and sets with our waking and dream states and hence is also impermanent. Moreover, this knowingness is sustained by the presence of sattva or the quintessence of food that is consumed by us and hence is dependent upon the five elements. Our swarupa is that in which the notions of me and mine are absent. It is the unmanifest reality which is devoid of expressions in the form of me and mine, or the world outside that is witnessed by me. It is devoid of the concept of being. Do not forget this understanding about your eternal true nature, even for a moment. Let the awareness of the truth about this living experience be with you every moment of your life. Find supreme solace through oneself. The one who says there is neither me nor God has transcended the realm of death. Such a person can only live in this Mrityulok or this land of mortals temporarily. Mrityulok is a place where the human body is born and dies. The experience of life there is impermanent because these experiences are based upon a body with the sense of existence of an outside universe. They belong to knowingness or the consciousness of being. Just as the strength of body abates during old age, the sense of being also eventually vanishes. What is glaringly visible and tangible right now perishes one day without a trace. That which continues to exist thereafter is all and is eternal truth. What is temporarily now with you only has a seasonal existence. The one who is now cognizing this knowledge of how our being is experienced will be untouched by all concepts. He will never be touched by the misconceptions of bondage or that what is unreal. One must have total certainty within oneself. Fullness is being free of all desires. The ambition to attain anything is merely a delusion. You must recognize your eternal nature here and now. True vairagya or renunciation is to identify that which does not exist in reality. This world outside is available off the shelf. Do not pay undue attention to it. When your attention is diverted to your own self and you know its cause, you transcend it. Then you see yourself as being unborn. Devotion is to know one's true nature. My advice is not to develop or nurture the feeling of being a body. Whatever you perceive as yourself and what you perceive as the world out there are one and the same. The five elements manage the worldly activities. You are not these elements, but consciousness or the quality of these elements. Do not listen to these talks assuming yourself to be a person with a body. The plants that you see around are in fact our ancestors. When sattva develops in balance, the medicines extracted from the plants are used to remedy any ailment. Veda means words. By incorrectly grasping these words, humans were engaged in various karmic rituals and were flung far from their true nature. 
the unstruck sound along with our sense of being forms Brahman. Consciousness that knows its existence should be our identity and not an individual mind. If the sense of being is studied in the light of jnana, one sees that mind is separate from our true nature. Acquiring this knowledge leads to an all-encompassing frame of mind. You cannot know if you are a little personality or an omnipotent infinite being with this mental frame. You can only know that in reality, you are one without a second and with no concept of dimensions. All actions in the universe happen on their own. Do not worry about them and get involved in them as a person. Once you know what is manifested, there will be no need to know the unmanifest or the Brahman without attributes. There are no words or sense of being in the unmanifest, just like in deep sleep. The true meaning of Paramatma Bhakti or devotion to God is to know one's true nature. That is true non dul Bhakti or Advaita Bhakti. The unmanifest which is without attributes became aware of that which has been manifested, resulting in duality. You must cognize that which is manifested or the sense of being that resides in you. Heaven and hell are false concepts. It may even be possible to split the sky one day, but it is impossible to remove these incorrect notions from the foolish dualists. Consciousness is common to all. The one whose mind is turned to the source of I is unconcerned with enjoyments and sacrifices in life, but to turn the mind to its source needs the grace of the Guru. Only the one who has imbibed and followed the Guru's instructions to the letter receives the grace of the Master. Such a one is free of activities even while appearing to be engaged in them. That which is our true nature has no knowledge of the place and time of our birth or any lineage. Just as an infant has no knowledge of being, and only when he grows up does his mother introduce him to concepts like me or mine. When you relinquish the incorrect notion about yourself, you will realize the true nature of others. Be like your own self. Atman or the self is complete in itself and is beyond birth and death. We are that. The one who looked after and took care of me when I was an embryo and nourished me during the helpless stage of infant ignorance is my Atman. One should act in life with a feeling and faith that Atman is my God. Rarely, however, does one adopt such a stance. The one who delivered me safely out of my mother's womb, I only worship him. Once the self is understood in this manner, a person will be automatically taken care of, just as he was taken care of in his mother's womb. God is nothing but the knowing of our existence. Worship such a God alone. Do not believe in transitory ideas of the mind. Be Atman by ignoring the mental chatter and live like one. Do not follow your mental trends, says Paramatman, revealing its true nature to us. Mine only defines myself as my body leading me to believe that birth and death belong to me. But the fact is different. If I had birth and death, I would have my own personal experience of it. Since I do not have this experience, I do not believe in it. The one who understands this is freed from the mischief of the mind. What is mind? It is merely a cluster of thoughts. These thoughts perpetually continue to waste our precious time and life. 
it is best to turn the thoughts away without welcoming or accepting them. Only cherish the thought that says, You are Atman, and not the body and reject the ones that say otherwise. When you exist without the mind, you are one with the self. Being free from the dictates of the mind enables you to understand your true nature. The absence of mind is the sahaja avashta, or the natural state. You must not say the word I, because then it would be followed with the statement, I am a person. Avoid the use of the word I and use the word we instead. Mind can recognize the body but not the self. Self has no dimensions and hence is neither big nor small. You go through various kinds of suffering all the time since you believe in your mind and surrender to it. You must be distant from the mind. Only then you know that the notion of birth is false. Jnana is all-pervading. The waking state, deep sleep, and the sense of being are due to the three qualities namely sattva guna, raja guna, and tamu guna. These qualities belong to one who is born. But in reality, I am never born. Sattva, or the quintessence of food that comprises this body-mind complex, and which is made up of the five elements, gives rise to the notion of birth and knowingness. Our place right now is in sattva. Just as the nameplate on the entrance of the house is not us, this house itself is not us. Sattva is not us either. Sattva is merely the quintessence of the food, which in turn is a product of the five elements. Thus, you must conclude that you cannot be sattva. Only then will you know that you are not born at all. On the other hand, if you consider yourself as a body-mind organism, then you are bound to endure the pain of birth and death. Only when birth is proven false, the fear of death can disappear. There is no such thing as death in anyone's experience. There is only a fear of death which is full of grief. Grief is an experience that happens suddenly unwelcomed and unsought. The cure for grief is substituting it with some kind of happiness. This is why birth or life is merely an intense activity and a ceaseless shuffle of sattva. Just as a child grows spontaneously, sattva functions in the world of its own accord. Jnana, though being dormant, permeates in all directions. This mysterious phenomenon of manifestation is a spontaneous attribute of supreme consciousness. The five elements that constitute this entire manifestation are also an outcome of that principle. There is no creator or administrator of this. Jnani, or the one who has known his own true nature, understands this fact intuitively. Discrimination provides self-knowledge. There is no eternal peace without atma, jnana, or self-knowledge. Self-knowledge means having direct experience of one's true nature, aparoksha anubhuti. For it to be recognized, one must hold on to the feet of the guru. Then, from ignorance arises wisdom, and from wisdom arises discrimination. This lifts you to the ultimate self-knowledge. Then the Lord of Foolishness becomes an exalted sage of supreme wisdom. Our sense of being appears without having to memorize it. In fact, if we recollect anything, it is forgotten again. Once the self knows you and your faith in that Atman is firmly established. That is enlightenment 
after which fulfillment happens on its own. All that one must do is devote himself to the Guru. Atman exists prior to a sense of existing. The spontaneous sound that is heard by the yogis during meditation is called Anahat Naad, or the unstruck sound. When one wakes up from deep sleep before saying, I am awake, there is an awareness of being awake. There's no memory of the body idea in that. Only when language happens does the concept I am the body arise. Breathing happens effortlessly of its own accord. This is a sign of the presence of mind. Speaking happens when one exhales. Before saying, I am awake, the awareness or feeling of being awake happens spontaneously. Meditate on the presence of that pure nature which happens spontaneously. You are actually already the one you are meditating upon. That is your own self. Atman is what exists before you know that you exist. The thought that I exist happens once you know your being. It is difficult to remain with yourself without the words I am. Life is just an accumulation of days. Birth is when they start getting collected and it ends when the last eventful day is over. When there is no experience of day, there is no sense of being either. When we are unable to sleep or unable to eat, we resort to medication. These medicines virtually run our life that starts with birth. Food and medicine are similar. Our knowingness is dependent on this input provided to our body. Our sense of being, the idea that we exist, is dependent on the pill of sattva, which in turn depends on the five elements that constitute the world. Our activities happen in line with our mental suggestions and beliefs. How then? Could we praise or criticize the scheme of things? The main cause of your being is Ishwana. By knowing this, you become more attentive and focus on the inconceivable and immaculate, the absolute. There is no finishing but growing. The water deposited on fields after the rains eventually dries up. But its effect is visible by observing the growth of the crops. In the same way, the knowledge that is gained here flows towards your own real nature and helps you in your final release. You may feel that over time these words are forgotten. However, their effect continues to increase in the background. One's swarupa cannot be realized by consciousness. Only para Brahman, which is aware of all, is taking notice. The experience of the world which is perceived by us is actually experienced by para Brahman. The only instrument of perception that you have is consciousness. That is presently your goal and the impetus you have to proceed. However, it has no connection with its knower. The space provides room for all activities to happen, but its knower remains untouched by them. In the same way, Kama happens to Parabrahman, but he remains untouched by it. Parabrahman cannot be described by words or their meaning. Since we cannot grasp something without a name, a name Parabrahman is attached to it. All beginnings happen and flow from Parabrahman, and yet no trace is left of anything. Para Brahman is as he is, unchanged, untouched, and unconcerned. When there is no knowledge of existence, there was no knowledge of non-being either. This immaculate and pure state is the state of Niani. It is the same state 
as a child. As a child is not aware of its being and all of its needs are taken care of and fulfilled. A child has no desires or aspirations and neither does a Niani. A Niani's actions happen spontaneously as a result of his conviction as the self. Your sense of being is currently present, but it will not last. Eons have passed. Does anyone from past history exist now? What is the current state of the people who lived in such an era and accomplished great things in their lives? The state in which they are in today is perfect, pure, and immaculate. This state is eternal, and it is indeed our true nature. Behold, your true nature is Parabrahman. Notice that this body is identified since you exist. You may not be easily able to accept this fact, but Brahman does not depend on your acceptance or non-acceptance. For Niani, this is different, as he is identified with Parabrahman. For him, everything within and outside is just an expression of the impersonal Brahman. On the other hand, when you probe into your true nature, you barely move beyond seeing yourself as a body. Your identification with the body will not last forever, because this belief is untrue. Even if this knowledge about Brahman that you are listening to is not grasped immediately, it does not go to waste. Because this expression of Parabrahman refers to your reality. Each person's individual interests are based upon their idea of identity. Since it is unreal, who can possibly benefit from such individual interests? Hence the primary interest must be to realize one's true nature. Firstly, you must know your true nature. Then you realize that your body and all actions depend upon your consciousness. Your true nature is unmanifest which sustains the lives of all. Never live your life assuming yourself to be a body. You must look into your true nature and find God within you. It is said that by imbibing these words, it is like seeing God. You must behold God as your own self. The body is made of the quintessence of food, owing to which there is a concept of being an individual. However, it is not your true nature. Prakriti and Purusha are eternal and have no beginning. They are invisible and beyond color and description. But their functioning happens relentlessly since the food of manifestation is out there. The knower of that is Purusha, and whatever can be seen is Prakriti. Purusha cannot exist without Prakriti and vice versa. This game of creation, sustenance, and dissolution is just a play of Purusha and Prakriti. When one's true nature is realized, the seer becomes like Parabrahman. He knows that what is born is merely a game of five elements and consciousness. There is no role of you or me in it. The world was born since you were born. The body is not your true nature. The indweller who says, I am not the body, but the sense of I within you is your true nature. Take that as a hint. Remember that the taste of consciousness is the memory that we are. Experiencer of omnipresence is Purusha. Sattva is one, but it comprises three qualities, namely sattva, rajas, and tamas. Pure sattva is our knowingness, or the knowledge that we exist. All three qualities are confined within sattva, 
or the remembrance of one's own existence. The memory that we are exists in sattva. It is contained in the form of the body. But that I amness which lives within is without a shape or a form. Sattva provides the knowledge of being. Rajoguna induces activity and Tamoguna claims doership of all actions. Of course, all activities are just imaginations. Purusha is not an individual but is the one who pervades in and through and experiences all that exists. He is beyond the three qualities. It is tradition to give a name to Parabrahman. No recognition or transaction such as praying is possible without a name. That is why when a name is uttered, we nod in recognition and understanding. But what is it that has been recognized? It is recognizing that it is impossible to cognize that which is real. We are trapped in the misconceptions of being a product of the three gunas. That is, some total of body and mind made and nourished by food we eat. But the one who has ardently listened to the Satguru and understands the truth is not trapped in such misconceptions even while appearing to be a person. Our parents are instrumental to the happenings of our conscious life, which no one is aware of. But consciousness is not an individual. It is the quintessence of food which is consumed by us, which in turn is made of five elements. These elements originate in Mulamaya, giving rise to Sattva. Sattva in turn gives rise to the quintessence of food. The understanding must dawn on us that none of this is our true nature. Loving consciousness is Lakshmi Raman. We must have a firm conviction that we are not the body but that which is unaffected by everything that happens around us. Our mental tendencies create various ideas. We are cursed with this knowledge of being. Before having this knowledge of our existence, we had no need for anything. Birth means perceiving the world outside, and death implies absence of such a perception. It is as if an illusory awakening happened, and like in a dream, these experiences have no reality. When the dream ends, the object of experience withers in that very instant. Can you find anyone who has not alternated between the waking and sleep states? In this game of life, what do you take yourself to be? When did this waking and sleep begin? How did it happen? One must seriously think on these lines. Even God cannot help me when I am beyond the states of waking and sleep, as there is no need even of a me in that state. Therefore knowingness is a state of ignorance, and it begins nine months before a child is delivered. The world is born out of ignorance. After the child is born, knowingness needs a couple of years to mature. The perception of the world that has happened due to our birth will end one day. Our consciousness has no shape, name, or form. It is free of ego. It is an experience that cannot last forever, but how can anything die if it has no form in the first place? Think of this and renounce fear. Thousands of births happen, but they are of Chaitanya, not of an individual soul. When Chaitanya receives a form, we call it a jiva, the soul. By discrimination, we must understand what we are and what we are not. Since there is no end to our wants or desires to solve this problem, do not think about what you want. 
But think about the one who is behind this wanting, and eventually the desires diminish. The consciousness that has appeared doesn't indicate my presence, but that of my parents, who were responsible for it. I existed prior to the arrival of this consciousness and was acquainted with my parents much later. We are present even prior to this understanding. Recollection of past events is a quality of Maya. Paramatman is without attributes. Maya is totally false. These are merely words that lead to more words being spoken by those who have no understanding of their true nature. Bada Brahman is not aware of its own existence. Hence, how can the information that it provides about Maya and Brahman be true? I realized my existence was full of joy, and I am engaged with it. One of the names of the Lord is Lakshmi Raman, which implies enjoyer of consciousness.